Heavenly Almighty Abba Father, thank you for this day, Abba. That it's just more and more in my spirit and, and in who I am that I just want to say thank you for this day. Father, because it's an absolute blessing to receive another day out of your gracious hand, Father. It's a blessing to wake up, to see the sun comes up. It's a blessing to, to walk on this earth, this creation of yours, Father. Thank you that we can be part of your creation. Thank you that we, we can take from your creation like we've done in the week that was past, Father, that we could eat, we could drink, we've got clothing, Father, we've got a place to stay. Abba, thank you. Also, thank you, Father, for the week that's coming. For the blessings, Father, for, for the seed that was sown into that week, Father. To you be all the glory and all the honor, Abba. Abba, Father, thank you for the store of portions the past couple of weeks and the amazing revelations in your word, Abba. Something new, a new manna that you give us every day, every week, Abba. I praise you for that, Father. And it's more and more you reveal to me, especially in this world that we live in, the opinions and the religions and everything in the world. Father, it's more importantly for us to understand and to know your kingdom, Father. To understand and to know there's a purpose, there's a destination, Father. To understand and know that your heart, your, your throne room, your presence, Father, that is ultimately, Daddy, your kingdom, that is our destination. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you that we can live it, that we can live it and learn about it, Abba. I pray that you will guide the words that will be spoken today, Father. May it be mana from your, from your throne room, Father. May it feed us, Abba. Give us the revelations, Father, to understand every word that will be spoken today, Father. Whether it's from my mouth, from Natalia, or whoever gives a message, Abba. Let it be true and let it be life. I pray all of this in your mighty, mighty name, my King, Messiah Joshua. To you belong all the authority, all the power. Amen. Again, Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. And uh, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. To bring this message that the Father has been laying on my heart now for the past couple of weeks. Like I said, from December, Father uh, has been teaching me and uh, showing me the kingdom and, and our preparation towards the kingdom purpose. So let's start with last week and we and we saw last week and we read about the instructions Father gave Moses and the Israelites. One instruction being that a slave must be set free after six years of labor. So after six years that the slave been forced into slavery, he needs or must be set free. And you see, then it's the slave's choice. He can choose to go, to walk out of his master's home and to be, to, to be under his own authority, or he can choose to stay under the authority of his master. So to be a bond servant is by choice. You see, at first a slave was sold into slavery to this master or to this owner. So we saw that a slave was, like I said, forced in under that circumstances. But should he decide to stay a servant after six years, then it's only by choice. The servant could decide whether he wants to uh, obey himself, he wants to be his own master, he can do what he wants to do, he can go where he wants to go, he can listen to whoever he wants to listen, or he stays under the instruction and the authority of the master where he served for the past six years. So let me put it to you this way. The choice was not to, 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 to stay as a slave, the choice is to stay under the instructions or not. 
the choice is to be what 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 the servant wanted to be or to stay under the rule and the instructions of this master the instructions of the master of the owner never changed the laws the commandments the way things should be done from the master never changed you see my brother and sister the instruction to stay the same under the master the instructions does not change and this we saw with messiah miss messiah came and he never changed the father's instructions Messiah never came and said, my son, my do daughter, um, be because you're free, I know that, uh, that the Father's instructions are inconvenience to you. So listen, you do not need to follow the instructions no more. The instructions of the Father shows the sin in my life. It shows my disobedience. And we know the instruction of the Father is truth. And His truth will always offend sin. So as a slave, must we, may we then just stay under the instructions of the Father. Matthew 28, 18 said, And Yahushua came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. There's only one authority, my brother and sister. Any other authority, any other opinion or uh, picture of the world or whatever is void of authority. The Father's will, His way, and His authority is not in man's opinion. So in saying that, let's start with this week's parasha, and it's called Teruma. Exodus 25, 1 to 27, 19. The whole idea or concept about the Exodus or to get out of Egypt is that there's a destination. A destination that the children of Yah is going to and similar that destination is in our lives. When we make the decision to follow Messiah, then we start to follow his footsteps towards a destination. And that destination, my brother and sister, is the kingdom, is the presence of the Father. And how amazing is the picture of the tabernacle now. The Father's word is so perfect. His timing is so perfect that his word falls into uh, alignment now and everything just seems to al align for you and me to be taught to understand how the kingdom works. So in following Messiah, are we representing him? If when I give my life to Messiah, is he creating me? Is he making me in his image? Do I then look like Messiah? Do I look like the, the image and the picture of Messiah? Is the fruit of my life the representation of his kingdom? And that, my brother and sister, that is the picture of the tabernacle. So for us to see and understand how Abba wants to dwell among us, then we need to look at the tabernacle. Because within the tabernacle, we see all the elements and the representations of who he is and how he wants us to be and how the father wants us to interact, me with him and the father with me. So what is the tabernacle all about? We will look at the picture of the tabernacle. We're going to talk about the relationships within the tabernacle. A relationship between me and the Father and between the Father and myself you, because it goes both ways. We're going to talk about my, my relationship and interactions with other people as well, with my community. So when Abba say to Moses that they should build him a sanctuary, Father never told Moses that the Israelites could design the tabernacle themselves according to their pictures. He never said, decide how it should look like and build it accordingly. Father never said, go to the heathen nations around you, go and see how they worship their gods and come and worship me the same way. Father never said, go and look at, at their uh, places of sacrifices where, 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 where they adore and worship their gods and come and build my dwelling place exactly the same. No, no, the father, the, the picture father gave Moses here is completely different. A completely different picture. 
Father had one tabernacle, one place where he wants us to come and dwell with him. The very first furniture piece or item described or talked about in the, uh, is the Ark of, of the Covenant. So Father starts by showing Moses the Holy of Holies and from there the Holy Place and the outer court. So we see there's a certain order in building his sanctuary. So how do we start to build our dwelling place for Abba? What do we focus on? How, how do we want to start this walk of salvation with Messiah? Is it a picture I'm going to follow? Is it an opinion from some church leader maybe that I'm going to follow? Or am I going to follow his picture? You see, Father is life. And he is love. And by starting with the Ark of the Covenant, Father says that we start with him in mind. He gives us light. He gives us love. He is our direction. You see, the Father, my brother and sister, is our compass. He becomes our provider. And today I'm not talking about financial. I'm talking about what I need for life. Well, what I need spiritually to grow, well, what I need to reach my destination, whatever I need emotionally, whatever I need physically, maybe some sort of healing, what, whatever it is, Father is what I need. The parasha describes the Ark of Covenant and how it should be built. And then he goes on from there and he describes the other furniture pieces within the tabernacle, the table of shewbread, the menorah in the holy place. The father goes on and he describes our interaction with him. A lot of details are given and amazing revelations <clears throat> that our father has in store for you and me by studying of the tabernacle. And, and today I'm not going to go into much of that because for the next two weeks, Natalia is going to teach about it and she's got amazing revelations and pictures that I know she's going to share with us. So if you haven't signed up with the conference, my brother and sister, get to it and signed up. Come and join us. So continuing, we, we see that there's four layers on the tabernacle. Woven work, goat's hair covering, ram skin coverings, and the outer covering that was the badger skin. The parasha continues with what the walls of the tabernacle should look like. We see how these poles or supports should be in silver sockets or foundation. We see how long and how wide all these items should be. We also read about the curtains inside the tabernacle between the outer court and the holy place. And the holy place and the holy of holies. The colors, the cherubims. Abba Yah also gives instructions about the outer court. Father gives the dimensions and the measurements of the outer court. And we see Father gives us a picture of intimacy. Studying the tabernacle, we see that Father wants to dwell with you and me. Just like he dwelt in the Garden of Eden. He then dwelt with the Israelites in the wilderness. And he wants to dwell with you and me today. And every day my brother and sister. That's why I started my prayer with today. Have we asked the Father's presence today? Have we asked him to walk with us today? To be with my family today? How do we approach the Father? Do we have the mindset like the Israelites had? Uh, listen, Moses, you go and speak to Father. Moses, go and speak to Father because we are scared. Or do we have a mindset perhaps like, Father is far from me. Abba is way too far. I can't speak to him. I can't relate to him. I can't interact with him. No, no. Here with the tabernacle, we see that we start to live a life of presence. We start to live a life of presence with the Most High King Himself. I can't live a set-apart life from a distance. Listen what I'm telling you here, my brother. I can't live a set-apart life from a distance. I need to be up close and personal. I need to be intimate with the King Himself. 
I've got to start with him in mind. My focus should be on him. You see, because when my focus is on him, then the cleansing process starts. Then the healing process starts. Then the process where he equips me starts. Then the process of intimacy starts with him. I need to keep my mind focused in on him. We need to understand the father's perspective of how he wants to be with us. How he wants to be served. If I want Abba to dwell with me, if I want the Father to be part of me, then it starts with the rumor. And that is the parasha for this week. It's a contribution. You see, something needs to be given. I need to give of myself. Let's read together Exodus 25 verses 1 to 8. Exodus 25 verses 1 to 8 and it says, And Jehovah spoke to Moshe saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they take up a contribution for me. So that's the first thing. It starts with a contribution. Then it says, From everyone whose hearts move him. Second thing. Continues to say, You shall take up my contribution, and this is the contribution which you take up from them gold and silver and bronze and blue and purple and scarlet material, and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin dyed red and fine leather, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, shram stones and stones to be set in a shoulder garment and in the breastplate. And they shall make me a set-apart place, and I shall dwell in their midst. Three very important foundations is mentioned here. We need to hear this word today. Three very important foundations is mentioned in these eight verses. First, he says, we must contribute. There's something that Francois need to lay down and give to the king. Something Francois need to give as a contribution, a sacrifice to the king. Secondly, he says, whose hearts move him. So what is my willingness? How, what is my character in all of this? And thirdly, we must build. It's something I must do. It's something I need to get involved in. It's something that I need to get involved with. John 3.16, listen to this, and we know this verse, but let's see this picture today. For Lua so loved the world that he gave his only brought forth son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but possess his everlasting life. Father gave. Father contributed to my salvation already. So what am I contributing towards my salvation? 1 Peter 1 verse 18 to 20. Knowing that you were redeemed from your future of futile behavior, inherited from your fathers, not with what is corruptible, silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Messiah, as of a lamb, unblemished and spotless, foreknown. Indeed, before the foundation of the world, but manifested in these last times for our sakes. So it's something that happened before the foundation of the world. Father started with giving of himself for us. Father created a place where he dwelt with us, among us. Father gave. He gave love. He gave a sacrifice. And just the same, my brother and sister, you and I need to give a contribution. It's not about money. It starts with who we are. It starts with everything I have. It starts with my vessel, this vessel, vessel, this um, piece that was created for, for the kingdom. It's like a furniture piece in the tabernacle. This vessel was created for the kingdom. I need to give of this vessel towards the Father. My family. My mindset. As we studied in last week's parasha, I willingly submit myself to His authority. I have to allow Him to write His instructions on my heart. To let it be written in my inner man so that I start to live it from the inside out. 
where my hands and my feet becomes uh, objects, where it becomes objects of obedience. Where, where my hands and my feet follow the instructions of the Father that's written in my life, that's written in my inner man, that's written in my soul. I start to follow His order. When I give of myself, then I become a living stone. 1 Peter 2 verse 5. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a set-apart priesthood to offer up spiritual slaughter offerings acceptable to Allah through Yahushua Messiah. You see, Peter's talking about contribution here. He's, I'm offering up of myself, not just my flesh, but my spirit and my soul. I'm offering up who I am, who I've been created, three-part creation, body, soul, and spirit, like the tabernacle, I, oh, I offer that up to my king. I give my contribution of who I am towards and for my king. So there's a giving and then there's a building involved. You see, up until now, we, we've, we, we've read and we've studied the orders and the instructions of our Father. His times, His revelations. And now we get to a point where the Father now wants you and me to dwell with Him. It's time, it's time to start building that dwelling place. So my walk with the Father starts with a contribution. But then it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. there. There's a destination. Father says we need to start building now. So I need. So, so this contribution is taking me towards something. That which I have needs to start building now. Exodus 25.2 says. Speak to the children of Israel that they take up a contribution for me. For everyone whose heart moves him. You shall take up a contribution. Freely give. Abba says, freely give of yourself. He says, my son, my daughter, you freely received the gift of life. You freely received salvation. I need you now to give of who you are. It's a free choice. I'm no longer in Egypt. I'm no longer under slavery. I get to choose. I get to give a contribution that takes commitment. When the Israelites had to give of what they had, and this we see in the building of the dwelling place for the Father, we give of ourselves. We give whatever they had, they gave. What, what, whatever I am, whatever I have, I give. My body is the temple. Father says, give. Abba now instructs Moses to receive all these offerings, all these contributions from the Israelites. And he says, build me a dwelling place. And they shall make me a set apart place, says the Father. And I shall dwell in their midst. A set apart place, my brother and sister, is not a place that the world builds. It's not a picture, like I've said earlier, of how the world wants stuff to be done. It's not a picture of the opinions of the world, how stuff should be done. It's a set-apart place, says our Father. So in order for us to see how we should prepare this tabernacle that was built for His presence, we need to study and we need to understand the processes and the orders of the Father. We need to be, we, we, we need to understand that we need to be filled with His Ruach, with His presence. Exodus 25, 9, according to all that I showed you, the pattern of the dwelling place is the pattern of all the furnishings. So what does it mean to you and me today for, for us not just to contribute, but to build? How do we build? What do we build? I want you to think about this. Does Father actually need anything from you and me? 
What is there that you and I own? What is there that you and I can make? Or what you and I can dream up? Or what you and I can produce that is not from the Father? He is everything. And the word teaches us Abba is in everything. Psalm 24 one says the earth belongs to him. All that it fills it. The world and those who dwell in it. 1 Chronicles 29, 11-14 if you want to join me, read this today. 1 Chronicles 29, 11 to 14 says, Yours, O Yahuwah, is the greatness, the power, and the comeliness, and the preeminence, and the excellency. Because of all that is in the heavens and in the earth, yours is the reign. So he says, yours is the kingdom. O Yahuwah, and you are exalted as head above all. And the riches and the esteem come from your presence and your rule over all. And in your hand is power and might. And in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. And now, O oh Allah, we thank you and praise you, comely name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give so voluntary at this? So for all comes from you and we have to give you out of your hand. You see what I give the father is not mine to decide what I want to give. It's all from his hand anyway. So I just give back to the father which is rightfully and dutifully his. To freely give is a willing sacrifice. So why should we contribute to the tabernacle, to the dwelling place? Or should we not think of a contribution as a higher purpose? You see, the tabernacle is a dwelling place of the Most High King. And whatever the Israelites gave, they gave towards this higher purpose. So whatever I give in my life, whatever I give of myself is towards a higher purpose. It's towards what the King wants. It's towards what the creator of heaven and earth wants. You see, in giving, I acknowledge him. In freely giving, in this willing sacrifice, in this contribute that I give towards the Father, I acknowledge him for what he has given me. I acknowledge him for being in my life. I acknowledge him as the higher purpose. You see, the Father freely gave His Son. And so we freely give to show, to show His light, to show His purpose, to bear His character. So the purpose of the tabernacle was not just a place where Father can dwell with you and me. The purpose of the, uh, of the, of the tabernacle is a meeting place. I meet with my father. I meet with my king. I get to dwell in his presence. So I give of myself as an acknowledgement. I dedicate myself to him. I dedicate whatever I have to him. For his higher purpose. His plans. His ways. I give of myself as a sacrifice. Everything. My mind. My body. My gifts. My talents. My hands, my feet. Teruma comes from the root word rum. And it means to be raised up. To be lifted up from something. It means to be lifted out to something. Or to be separated for some higher purpose. Like I've just said... It's not about me. It's about the purpose of the king. It's the higher purpose he's got for us. So when we see that we give. So when we need to give this contribution. It's not for what I want. It's not for my purpose. But it's my contribution is to be raised up for his purpose. For to let his kingdom come. We need to freely give. You see, not everyone is going to give. 
we all sometime in our lives will receive this invitation. Revelation says, I'm standing by, your, by, by the door and I knock and those who open, I shall dwell with them. Father says he'll tabernacle with that person who opens up for his presence. And not everyone is going to open up for the presence of the Father. Not everyone is going to freely give. Not everyone is going to build this dwelling place with the Father. You see, it's up to you and me. When we hear the voice of the King. To obey the voice. To contribute. To freely give and to start building. So are we preparing a place for the Most High? To dwell with us? Are we preparing our physical homes? Yeah, my house. Have I prepared my house for the King to come and dwell in this house? Have I prepared my heart for the King to come and dwell in my heart? You see, because our bodies, the word teaches, is now the temple. It's the place where the Ruach comes and stays. How are we preparing? Are we willing to give us to His purpose? Imagine this picture. Imagine being forced to build on this one building project. And then be set free or be redeemed, but just to go and work on another building project. You see, the Israelites in Egypt have to build for Pharaoh. And now in the wilderness, Father is asking them to build for him. But there's a difference, my brother and sister. In Egypt, we were building out of a place of slavery and bondage and hard labor and punishment. But in the desert, in the wilderness, where we're being asked to build for the Father out of relationship. Out of intimacy. Out of love. So what is our attitude regarding this? Are we freely giving? Are we freely with an open heart and a willing heart and a joyful heart? Are we building this tabernacle? Are we building this dwelling place? You see, my building and the way I build it and how I build it should be a sacrifice. It's a contribution. It's a sacrifice unto the Most High. We are asked to willingly participate in building His kingdom. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 says, Let each one give as he purpose in his heart, not of grief or necessity, for Lua loves a joyous giver. And so many times, so many places, whatever, use this verse for collecting money and stuff. No, Father is talking about building for Him. Laying a foundation for His kingdom purpose. Giving of what I have, who I am, towards His kingdom. This higher purpose. There's 50 chapters telling us and teaching us about the tabernacle. About the presence of the Father. But did you know only two chapters explaining the creation? There's 15, one, five chapters that talks about Abraham, our father of faith. Again, 50 chapters that talks about the tabernacle. There's such an importance in this, guys. It's not something that we should just page through quickly and let's just get through this exodus so that we can get on to the next book. Or let's keep the Torah, let's keep the Old Testament and let's just read what is, whatever is in the, uh, 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 in, in the New Testament. So where do we stand with the Father? Are we serving out of a free will? Are we submitting and contributing to building this, this dwelling place? I believe we are in a very significant timing in, in our lives. And especially with the word of the Father. 
where we see his prophecies becoming reality and also where the word that was locked up for the end times are starting to be revealed. I can tell you now that 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 every time I'm in conversation with the Father, every time that, 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 that I'm in prayer, it's, it's just being laid on my heart regarding the kingdom. We need to understand these pictures because there's so much false teachings out there. I started this message by saying the whole idea of the Exodus uh, is the salvation process of ours. This destination. How, how are we being equipped for the kingdom of the Most High? I was asked by a brother of mine to come and teach at this fellowship last week, Sunday. And as I've mentioned before, that Father laid on my heart in December already to start talking about and give this message about his kingdom. And when, we, and when we study the Exodus uh, Torah portions, then, then, then you see the fullness of this kingdom picture. We see the salvation process, this redemptive process, and then we see this destination of the Israelites. The, this destination to where, where they're moving towards something. And how they dwell with the Father on this uh, walk with them. My destination, your destination is the kingdom. We see that in the story portion that, as we've discussed, that the Father is light. His word is light. He's our beacon. Just like a lighthouse is a warning to a ship coming close to possible destruction, so also the Father's word in your life, in my life, is light. It shows us the possible destruction in our life. And again, on the flip side, just as the lighthouse then shows safety and shows life, the Father's word shows safety and life in our life. And today I would like to talk about the kingdom of the Father in the tabernacle. How his tabernacle represents his kingdom. How the tabernacle and, the, and his kingdom is a parallel. Luke 4.43 His Messiah is speaking and he, said, and he said to them, To the other cities I also have to bring the good news, the reign of Elua. Because for this I have been sent. You see, here Messiah talks about the gospel or the good news of the kingdom. And so many times we are taught uh, about the gospel or the good news of salvation. So what is the difference here? What is, what is the difference between the good news of the kingdom and the good news of salvation? Messiah or Yahushua was sent to bring the kingdom of Abba to earth. Heaven, as we know it, is the kingdom of the Most High, my brother and sister. John 4.24 teaches us that Father is Spirit. So Messiah comes, Father Himself comes, He comes to earth to come and interact with you and me. Father brings His heaven, He brings His kingdom to earth to interact with you and me. Messiah went back and, 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 he, and, he, and he sits on his throne and now he says he's given us Ruach. So the breath of the Father is now interacting with you and me. The kingdom is here on earth. So let's start with the gospel of salvation. What is the gospel of salvation? And again, like I said, so many times we hear these teachings about the gospel of salvation. So what is it? Shortly, you see, Adam and Chava was given this instruction, this one instruction in the Garden of Eden, not to eat from a certain tree. So they, they had this one instruction and they disobeyed the Father's instruction because they listened to the serpent. They, they listen to the opinion of someone else. Thus, 
They were disobedience or dis, they disobeyed the Father. And, and they were removed from the presence of the Father because darkness can't be in the presence of light. Um, sin can't be in the presence of a holy year. And secondly, they had to be removed because in the sinful state, if they then ate of the tree of life, they would have been or they would have stayed for eternity in the sinful state. So they had to be removed until Messiah could come to die for our sin. So because of sin, they lost the presence of the Father and the ability to dwell with Him. Father, like we said earlier, had to send His Son, Joshua, our Messiah, to come and die, to freely give of Himself on the cross for our sins. And while He was perfect, while He was without spot and blemish, He had to take the weight of my sin and your sin upon Himself. So Father showed His love through grace and mercy on the cross. Messiah paid the price for our salvation. Messiah paid the price to everyone who acknowledges their sin and accept Him and take Him as their Savior. So we can repent of our sins now. And we can enter into the presence of the Father. And this is what we are taught as the gospel of salvation. And yes, that is true. But what then? What happens after I've accepted Joshua Messiah as my Savior? Am I saved forever? I don't need to walk out my salvation? I, I don't need to build on that? In other words, once saved, always saved? No, 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 no. And this is the teaching of the tabernacle. You, 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 you see, because we get taught in the world by the serpent teaching that once saved, always saved, uh, Messiah uh, paid the price already. Uh, for answer, listen, if you give your life over to the king, you're saved, brother. You can do and go and say and whatever act as you want to. And that we know with the picture of the tabernacle studying the kingdom of the Father, that is a false teaching. You see, Messiah is the light. And if I decide to follow the light, if I decide to give my life towards the light and the truth, and then I turn from the light. If I turn from light, I turn towards darkness. We need to see this picture. If I do not follow the instructions of Messiah no more, if I do not proclaim Him as my, as my Savior, my King, and I'm, I'm, and I'm not following Him, He's no longer my light, then I'm turning towards darkness. And darkness is in disobedience. You see, then I lose my salvation. If I start to follow opinions that is not the Father's opinion, if I start to follow doctrines and teachings that is not His doctrinal teaching, then I'm not following the light. And I need to repent because if I do not repent, I will be lost. So now that we know the good news of salvation, let's start with the good news of the kingdom. And part of that, I want to mention this today, Matthew 6, verse 9 to 10. This then is the way you should pray. Our Father who is in heaven, let your name be set apart. Let your reign come. Yahushua is saying, Father, let your kingdom come. Let your desires be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do we actually know what we are praying or asking the Father here? Do we know what we what, 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 what we ask him when, when we say, let your kingdom come to earth? You see, the kingdom of the Father is all about His will. It's all about His ways, His promises, His presence, His authority, and His instructions. So when I pray, Father, let your kingdom come, that is what I'm praying that is what I'm saying. I'm asking the Father to manifest His kingdom on earth. And His kingdom is His will, His way, His presence, His instructions. 
We, when I pray for the Father and say, Abba, let your kingdom come in my life. Abba, let your kingdom come in my relationship with my sons, in my relationship with my workers, in my relationship with my wife. When I say, let your kingdom come, this is what I'm saying. His purpose, His higher authority. To teach about the kingdom of the Father of Abba Yah will take literally a whole weekend. And we don't have we don't have time for that because we need to talk about what is the kingdom of Yah. What is the kingdom on earth and what is the kingdom that yet still needs to come? Who is our king? Do we know our king? When we call our king, uh, how do we call upon him? What is the spiritual kingdom or the, fix, the, the, the physical kingdom? What is my role in the kingdom? What is the laws and the rules and instructions of the kingdom? And importantly, who will be enforcing them? So for today, let's just quickly, let's just quickly look at one question and start to answer that. And that is, how do I become part of the kingdom of the Most High? Now you see, my brother and sister, this is where the kingdom of Father comes in. My salvation, my salvation is a walk. It is a walk I do towards a destination. I'm going to say it again. My salvation is a walk I do towards a destination. And that destination is the kingdom of the Father. So understand me clearly today. Not for one second am I saying that teachings about the gospel of salvation is wrong. In fact, it's absolute truth. What I'm saying is that there is so much more to my salvation than just a repentance prayer and accepting Messiah as my, uh, as my Savior. If Messiah is light, then I must become light. You see, that is the building uh, Father is talking about here. If Messiah is truth, then I must become truth. So let's start the study about the kingdom of Yah. And let's see how it relates. And again, like I said, how it parallels with the study of the tabernacle. When we look at the tabernacle, then we see it is exactly what Messiah came to do and to teach us about. When I enter in through the way, it, that represents Messiah. Then I need to get to a point where I, I repent of my sins. I lay my own selfish needs, my pride, my ego, the world's opinions and doctrines. I lay all of that down at the altar. And then I continue to walk in the way that leads me to His presence in the most high place. So I got my salvation in the outer court, but then what? Is that enough? Am I satisfied with just seeing His light? Am I satisfied about just hearing about His, His presence? Or do I want to get close to Him? And that is my salvation. It's an opportunity to enter the presence. But still the decision is mine. The first step to, to, to take is mine. To build a dwelling place for my king with me. That's my decision. My salvation is my contribution to this walk and relationship with the king. Most of Messiah's messages and teachings was about the kingdom. About the reign of Abayah. And also about the king, the coming kingdom. The kingdom of Abba Father is mentioned. Like I said previously, 50 times in the Bible. 50 times it's spoken about the, 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 the kingdom of the Father. Just like the tabernacle is spoken about in 50 chapters. So it again shows us the importance and, 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 and the need for us to understand this, this destination, this place that we're going towards, this kingdom of the Most High, the kingdom that is now in me, but also a kingdom that is physically still coming as well. Messiah talked about the kingdom of the Father in parables. And you can read about it in Matthew 13, 3-9. 
Matthew 13, 25 to 30. Matthew 13, 31 to 33. And 13, 33. We've all read Luke 4, 43, where Messiah said that he came to bring the kingdom to earth. Messiah taught his followers that, that, that the kingdom came to earth with his coming. You see, because Messiah brought the presence of the Father to the earth. Luke 9, 20 says, But truly I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death at all till they see the reign of Elua. So there's still much more to come. It's not just about the kingdom or the presence of the Father in me now. There's much more to come. Luke 13, verse 8 to 21 says, Therefore he said, What is the reign of Elua like? And to what shall I compare it? And Messiah says, it's like a mustard seed, which a man took, threw it into his garden, and it grew and became a large tree. And the birds of the heavens nested in its branches. And again, he said, to what shall I compare the reign of Elua? It's like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. You see, what we experience or what we feel uh, about the kingdom of the Father is now, it's here, it's with me. But what is coming is so much more. And, and like this uh, kingdom of heaven is like leaven. You and I, my brother and sister, should go out and spread this word of the Father. We should go out and, and proclaim the kingdom of Abba that is to come and which is. In my presentation last week at the tabernacle in Pretoria, Father taught me the following, and I need you, if there's only one thing you hear today, hear this. And may Father give you the revelation of what I'm about to say. Father taught me last week, my salvation is a seed. My salvation is a seed. You see, there's purpose to my salvation. I'm not just saved to lay back on a couch and watch TV. I'm not just saved to, uh, I don't know, live this normal life, whatever normal might be, and think I can keep my mouth shut. I do not need to proclaim the kingdom. I do not need to walk out my kingdom life or my salvation life. Uh, I, I, I do not need to follow the instructions of the Father. I do not need to study His Word. My salvation is a seed. And a seed needs to grow. Because only in growth there's fruit. The seed of salvation is to be lived out. Because in that I start to bear fruit for His kingdom purpose. For His higher purpose. The good news of the gospel is not just to be saved. Listen to me. The good news of the gospel is not just to be saved from eternal death. But for the purpose of His kingdom. To let his kingdom come on earth through me as a vessel. So when we talk about the good news of salvation, we should also talk about the good news of the kingdom of Abaya. It should be one teaching. We are given the seed of eternal life. That is my salvation, yes. But like any other seed, where is the fruit of that seed? Because a seed that does not deliver fruit is a dead seed. Where is my works without faith? A seed that does not deliver kingdom fruit or kingdom works is a dead seed. There needs to be fruit. So what are we doing with our seeds of salvation? Let me put it to you like this. If Messiah is light, if Messiah is life, if Messiah is grace and righteousness, if He gave me His seed, then surely I must be exactly the same. Then surely my fruit should be light. 
Surely my fruit should be life and should be grace and should be righteousness. For now the kingdom is within me. I am the territory which the Ruach lives in. I am the kingdom of the Most High right now. His power and authority is within me. His fruit growing in me. His gifts working through me. But a time is coming soon, my brother and sister, when the physical kingdom, the, 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 the territory, the heavenly territory will come to earth. There's a time come, coming that we call the millennial time. When the father will establish his millennial kingdom. Yes, the kingdom is now within you and me. But it's physically also coming to the earth. Revelation 21 says, And I saw a renewed heaven and a renewed earth. For the former heaven and the former earth had passed away and the sea is no more. And we know the verse about the new city that's coming down as well. So while I'm here being a vessel for the kingdom of the Most High, doing His kingdom purposes, the Father is preparing you and me for His coming. Abba is preparing you and me for his new heaven coming to earth. You see, with the free gift of salvation comes the free gift of adoption. I said yes to him. So he adopted me. What do I do with that adoption now? Do I obey my new father? Do I obey my father's instructions? Do I listen to his authority? You see, because I'm adopted, so I represent his household. I represent his kingdom. That's why my kingdom life starts now, guys, here on earth, in this time. We are here to serve the bride and tell others about his kingdom. Our eternal life starts now. My kingdom purpose starts now. John 6, 38. Because I have come down out of the heaven, not to do my own desire, but the desires of him who sent me. Kingdom purpose starts now. His purpose. Our destination is the kingdom. Just like the Israelites had a destination out of Egypt, which was the, their promised land. For them to inherit. And our way there, and on our way there, the king is teaching them. You see, now with me, with my salvation, on my, on, towards my promised land, towards this kingdom of heaven that the Father is coming and bringing to earth, towards that Father is building me, He's equipping me, He's teaching me for His purpose. While I'm here to let His kingdom come. So what do I do to prepare my salvation? I need to follow the instructions of the Most High. Father moves with a mighty outstretched arm and He redeems His people. He guides them through the wilderness towards their promised land where they inherit that land. Just the same, Father moves with a mighty hand and He sends His Son to redeem you and me. And, he, and, and we're still in this world because uh, Messiah prays and He says, Father, I pray that you do not take them out of this world, but that you will keep them. You see, we are being kept here and we've been kept safe here to let His kingdom come, to let His will be done. My salvation is my first step towards kingdom purpose. My salvation is my seed for my destination. My salvation is because of the way I live and prepare for the kingdom while I'm in this world. I do not 
get the kingdom because of my salvation. And I want to make this clear. Hear my words. I do not get the kingdom because of my salvation. My salvation is preparation for the kingdom. My salvation is preparation for the kingdom. Because I study my master's instructions. I know what he wants from me, what he expects from me. I know how to sacrifice, how to freely give, how to build with him. My salvation is preparation for the kingdom, my brother and sister. The way I live and prepare to let his kingdom come. To give of myself to the Father, sowing seed into his kingdom. So may you and I today, may we as children of the Most High King start to live out our salvation. When we enter through the way, Messiah is the way, is the truth and is the life and the Father is life. So when we enter through the way and we move through all the truths of this altars and, 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 the, and the basins and the menorah and the shoe bread and we get to life. Then we get to sow our seed into the Father's kingdom. So may we as children of the Most High King start to live out our salvation. May people experience the manifestation of the Father in us. And it's my prayer that we will not just be ready to let his kingdom come on earth, but we may be fully equipped for his kingdom that's still to come as well. Let's pray. Our by our Father. Daddy, I thank you. I thank you for your truth and I thank you for your word. And I thank you for the opportunity to call you Father. To know that I have been adopted. To know that I live in your household. Father, to know that I freely and willingly submit under your instructions. That I freely and willingly follow your orders and your authority. That is my prayer for your bride, Abba. That is my prayer for your children. That, is, that they will freely give of themselves. That they will be willingly bringing this contribution towards you and for you, my Father. That they will build this dwelling place with you, my King. And Abba, it's my prayer as we continue with the studying of the Torah and these parashas, Father, that you will daily and weekly reveal to us, Abba, reveal to us your presence, reveal to us your dwelling place, reveal to us your kingdom, Father. Let us understand the fullness of the picture of the tabernacle. Let us understand the fullness of the picture of your kingdom, Father. May we submit to your instructions freely, Abba, not being forced to submit, not being forced to obey, not being forced to follow some order, Abba, but willingly in love, Daddy, out of passion for you, my King, may we willingly submit, Father. That's my heart's cry today, Father, to all my brothers and sisters, to everyone who hears your word, Abba, freely, Daddy. Thank you, my King. Thank you that you are who your word says you are. That you are not confused. Your word is not confusing, Father. Because your Ruach reveals to us your truths. May your Ruach always, Abba, may your breath, your presence, may, may you always reveal to us truths. I praise you and I honor you and I thank you, my King, Messiah, Yeshua. 
Thank you. Thank you for, for the salvation you've given us. Thank you for the price you've paid. Thank you that you raised from the grave and that you sit on the right hand of the Father. Thank you for your Ruach who guides us, who equips us, who teaches us and who reveals to us your truth only. In your mighty name, my King, I pray and I ask to let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your presence come to this world. Let your truth and your revelations come to this world. Let your instructions, your orders, and your authority come to this world. May your children, Father, may they recognize your kingdom. May they not listen to any false teaching. Let them recognize your truth, my Father. There's so much lies out there, Abba. This is my prayer, Father, that you'll reveal That you'll reveal your kingdom and you'll show us your truth. Let your kingdom come in our homes. Our relationships with our spouses. Our relationship with our sons and daughters. Our relationships with our communities, Father. You are an allure of order of unity and harmony. And I pray your unity, your order and your harmony over your bride, over your children today, Father. That there will not be pride and strife, Abba Father. That we will not stand in our own egos and opinions, my Father. But that we will follow your authority. Because if we follow your authority, then I will not stand in my own authority. If I follow your light, Abba, I will not stand in darkness. Thank you, my King. Let your will be done. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Please raise your hands. As I pray this blessing over you. Yaverechecha, Yahua Vish Merecha. Yaer Yahua Panavelecha. Vichunecha. Yesa Yahuna, Yahua Panavelecha, via Sem Lecha Shalom. May Abba Yahua bless you and keep you. May Abba Yahua makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Heavenly Father lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, shalom.